Uh, I'm Chris Lawson. I am the co-founder of a digital agency called Live Pulse. Uh, we build products for startups through Fortune 1000 companies. Uh, I am a marketing consultant inside the company. I, I run the digital marketing half of the company. Um, for a long time, I didn't know that there was a name for what I did. I just called it guerrilla tactics and hustling and dealing with not having a budget. <laughs> there's like, my title was like guy who could make some shit happen that didn't have a budget to do it. And now there's an actual term and it's called growth hacking. So we're gonna talk about growth hacking today. Matt just showed up with the good stuff. So let's go ahead and pop those corks. If you're up front, you're in the good zone. If you're in back and you want a mimosa, come on up, let's do it. It's like 11 o'clock on a Sunday. It's time to do this, right? All right, so a little bit more about myself. Uh, there we go. Um, I also, uh, aside from Live Pulse, uh, I also own a digital record label uh, and, and turning that into a digital music startup. Uh, I cut my teeth working at a company called Ruckus. It was the world's first legal music and movie uh, social network. Got acquired by uh, a U Universal and Sony joint venture. Um, and then I started consulting um, and started my own agency. And it was working with startups that I really learned how to, to grind it out. And we had to start to figure out how to grow rapidly, grow a rapid user base and make money without investing a ton of money. So the, the concept of growth hacking is really well aligned with the lean startup movement in that um, when you don't have a ton of cash to, to put into traditional advertising and traditional marketing, you gotta figure out a better way to do it. Uh, I also have started a company recently, a subsidiary of Live Pulse called Startup. We're a monthly startup t-shirt subscription box. So every month you get two shirts from two cool new startups. That in itself is a growth hack. We started this company as a way for my agency to talk to the CMO of every startup in the world. I couldn't have done that before. So what, that's what we're gonna talk about today is that growth hacks don't necessarily have to be technology related. It's an end around to get to your goal. WordPress is an amazing tool to, to do this because it's infinitely extensible and it's got tons and tons of tools. I'm also a Converge US fellow. Uh, after hearing Scott just tell me that I shouldn't be giving away for free, I'm gonna quit that shit immediately. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I'm also a proud member of the advisory board for the Orlando Tech Association. And if you're not familiar with the Orlando Tech Association, uh, let's talk about it later because it's a great thing in this city and some real growth is happening. Okay, this is, I'm an award winner um, and I want to make sure that you know that you're listening to somebody who wins awards. Um, best damn rock shrimp you'll ever have. That's the last time I won anything. All right, so let's talk about growth hacking. Uh, I, my definition is that it's a, a very specific marketing niche. It's not necessarily a tactic because there's a series of tactics. It's marketing strategy uh, with a laser focus just on growth. Uh, growth of user engagement, growth of your email address list, growth of social reach, most specifically growth of revenue. It's not branding. It's not just raising awareness. It's not traditional mediums like television and radio. It's not any of those things. It's specific tactics that will grow your business. Maybe a better and more educated uh, explanation is from this dude, Ryan Holiday, where he says, growth hackers build the products, potential growth, including user acquisition, onboarding, monetization, retention, and virility into the product itself. And he really did word that better than I did because uh, what we're talking about today is using WordPress, the platform itself, the product that you're selling as the marketing vehicle. It doesn't have to have external forces necessarily weighing in because you can build a product that's so good that people want to tell other people about it. In fact, it's not just the want, you can build mechanisms in place where you're requiring it. Let me suggest that you get a mimosa while they're still available. Thank you again, Matt. Okay, so you've all heard the term uh, optimization. This thing's gonna work. 
Let's stand on this side and see if that helps. Okay. So optimization, I'm sure you've heard that term before. Uh, growth hacking is, is optimization. It's making sure that the various platforms and the various products systems in your product are optimized in a way that people will uh, sign up for it, they'll start using it, et cetera. So we're going to be talking about email, social media, search, conversion, and revenue. All of those things, if you can optimize them in a way that you don't have to put a ton of cash out front, a ton of effort out front, but you can still grow those, that's kind of the traditional uh, way of looking at growth hacking. So some of my fundamentals of marketing uh, and of growth hacking are digital pyromania. Light a ton of small fires and see what burns. So with a tool like WordPress, you're able to do that without a ton of upfront cash and, uh, and you can run experiments. Experimentation is the name of the game. Data-driven experimentation is what growth hacking is all about. You can try something new, if it doesn't work, you cut your losses and you go back. My second fundamental is standing on the shoulders of giants. Use the people that you know that have a larger reach than you do to get the word out about your product. So that could be your customers, it could be your clients, it could be your strategic partners, it could be uh, well-read bloggers, journalists, uh, celebrities. Some of the digital tools that we have uh, at our disposal now give us access to the celebrities in a way that we never had before. So if Ashton Kutcher would just retweet my, my startup idea to everybody, we've hacked the shit out of it. Okay, so one of the, uh, a really great example of growth hacking is what Twitter did um, back in 2009. They figured out that people were signing up and they had an empty feed and not a whole lot was happening. People would sign up and look at it and go, what is this? And then they wouldn't come back. They realized is that when people followed five to 10 other people who were their peers or just people that they're interested in, their feed was full, it was engaging, those people followed them back. And just by changing the onboarding process, they got 10 times growth and engagement almost immediately. And you gotta check out this growth chart. You can see the exact moment when they implemented that one simple change. So a marketing guy didn't do that. The developer did. The developer looked at the data and said, this is our most active user base. What can we do to get more of them? And then booyah. OK, so this is a growth hack that my agency Live Pulse did. So that's obviously my very favorite one ever. We, uh, we had a client called Flat World Knowledge who has open source textbooks for uh, universities. The traditional textbook companies are like the mafia. They've got like a serious lockdown. They've forced the universities to use their textbook. And uh, it, the, it was like five times inflation, the cost of textbooks. A student spends $2,000 a uh, semester on books, $2,000 a semester. So $4,000 a year. So Flat World Knowledge came out with this open source technology. And they had a, a couple of ways to monetize it, but it was pretty legit. They couldn't get into the classroom to talk to professors and, and get any headway because the mafia was in place. So what they did is they started a petition that pissed off students, parents, professors, uh, administration, they could sign it. Petitions are great, right? They're going to take that petition, they're going to send that to the presidents of the universities, the government, local, federal. Uh, getting senators involved was a, a good task. And then after you sign the petition, you're encouraged to share social shares. All of that is pretty decent, right? Well, check this out. Then, <laughs> got a master list of pretty much every professor in the United States. And when a student signed up at one university with their .edu email address, an email was sent to 10 professors at that school that said, such and such at your school just signed this petition. And here's a link to your courseware on our service that's free. So for every one student or parent or professor that signed it, 10 professors at their school were emailed encouraged to sign the petition, adopt the courseware for their, their book, and sign it themselves, share it with their students, etc. So breaking through the mafioso, uh, within a couple of days, this thing's going to work. 
uh, we got 10, 000, uh, tens of thousands of signatures, which led to hundreds of thousands of, of emails that were dynamically created for that specific professor. Over 1,300 universities in the United States were reached, tens of thousands of social shares and following, tons of press came from it, and it was immediately adopted at over 200 universities. I mean, this happened in a couple of days. They, they had a sales team working on this for years prior to this and could break through. So this is the kind of thing that technology can enable. And this one was custom coded, you know, it was pretty complex, but what we're gonna talk about today is how WordPress can be used to do some of these kind of things. So, um, this is my first public service announcement. Use analytics to gather data and metrics, or else I'm gonna punch you in the face because it is that you have to do it. You cannot learn what works if you're not tracking it. Google Analytics is free. There's no excuses. And I know that for lots of you in the room, you're like, yeah, yeah, why is he saying that? It's because we see it every day. There's still people who are like, well, we think that it's gonna work, and it's gonna try. No, don't do that anymore. Track it, figure out what works. Okay, now that the punch in the face threat is off the table, uh, well, I'm gonna start with a real easy one. And let me go ahead and say now that some of you are gonna think that some of the examples I put here are stupid simple, um, but then there's some of you who might not know, so I'm gonna try to hit right in the middle. There's stuff that's much more complex that's not included, there's stuff that's much simpler than is included. So if you think that what I'm talking about is, is over your head, let's talk about it later. If you think it's way below, keep it to yourself. Okay, so I'm starting with a simple one. Single sign-on, which is the ability to log in to your site, instead of having to enter your email address uh, and, and password, you can use a series of, of services like log in with Facebook, log in with Twitter. Uh, this one is called Auth0, A-U-T-H-0, in the WordPress plugin store, or directory, excuse me. Uh, and you can see they've got quite the range. Know your customers. If you have a blog that uh, you want people to sign up for and your target audience is married women in their 20s, use Pinterest as the tool to let them log in. If your target audience is developers, let them use GitHub to, to log in. If it's entrepreneurs, let them use Basecamp or PayPal. You know, know your audience and then provide that. That's why I like this plugin because it's got tons of options. If you're a professional service, LinkedIn is a great one. If it's just for fun and for sharing pictures, Facebook and Twitter and Google. So know your audience. This plugin costs, uh, there is some, some fees associated with this one. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of single sign-in services. Several of them are free. Do not hesitate. You might think that this is simple. You might find it annoying. For some reason, people are like, I don't wanna ask them for access. It works. There's evidence that there's like a 400% increase in people signing up. So why wouldn't you do this? There's just no excuse for you to do it. Okay, the next one, we're gonna talk a lot about Sumo Me. I really love Sumo Me. Uh, it's one plugin that's got lots of features. First one we're gonna talk about is Highlight to Share. It's relatively self-explanatory, but the cool thing is it's almost like it's an Easter egg. If, if your user happens to highlight something, this box populates and it's got that text in it, they're gonna do it because they're so excited about this cool feature that your blog has that not that many do right now. It's a great way for your content to get shared. It's a great way to get them engaged and excited. And engagement in this capacity is akin to getting them to take that first micro step. Going back to the Twitter example, having one level of content creation of your user is a step towards an investment. And if you've got them invested in doing something as micro as this, you might be able to get them to take the next step significantly easier. Okay. Uh, the next Sumo Me tool that I like is the welcome mat. We're gonna get into the stuff that well, I might hear some groans about where people are like, oh, I don't wanna do that in my blog. Again, I'm recommending these things because they work. The welcome mat, so this is a website, and after like five seconds, this pushes down, excuse me, and it takes over the entire screen. So this is where you might go, I don't wanna do that to my users. You'll get five digit, five fold, five digit increase probably if you do something like this. It's a little bit intrusive, um, so you might say, 
I don't want to do it because I don't want to piss my users off. But if you can grow your list from 100 to 5,000 in a matter of weeks, you need to do it. Uh, do you want to be in business or do you want to piss off a couple of people? Uh, and I know that sounds kind of harsh, but the, the outliers who are annoyed by something like this that they can easily scroll past and easily close uh, is not, it's not enough to put your business in danger. You need to grow. Uh, the next one that Sumumi provides is, is similar to this welcome mat. Come on. Uh, and it is uh, the exit intent window. So what exit intent is, is when you are about to, your user is about to leave the website, it tracks the movement that they're going to cancel out the browser tab and a pop-up appears. And it's one last chance for you to ask them for something. Give me your email address in exchange for a coupon, uh, buy your tickets, t-shirts are for sale. Uh, this is the one that I get the most size on. You know, people are like, I really don't want to do that, especially in conjunction with the welcome mat. You can do them together. Well, let me tell you one thing that's super awesome about SumoMe is there is a lifetime cookie that tracks if your user has signed up and given you an email address so they no longer see the welcome mat, they will not see the exit intent window and you never have to worry about pissing them off again the next time they come back. You don't necessarily want them seeing the same exit intent uh, pop up over and over and over. And the other tools uh, usually have cookies, but they don't have it to where the different disparate tools work together. And I love that about Sumumi. Sumumi has a free option. Uh, they also charge uh, if you want to get super customized, but you should give it a try. Give, give the free version a try to see how it works for you. Um, oh, that's just a, a little bit of background on it. To, to use the exit intent and to make it intelligent enough that it's not just a regular pop-up, it does it based on movement or time on page. You just have to check the, the setting in the list builder functionality of Sumimi to the smart feature and then you can customize it. It works on mobile as well. You can set a timer so you can say it will appear after what you should do is look at your Google Analytics and look at how long the average time on, on pages for your mobile users and go three or four seconds just before that and you present them with this message. Okay, and the last thing that Sumimi does that I really dig is a welcome bar. You've probably seen this on sites where at the top of a page uh, a message appears. Uh, here's an example of one that's not asking for an email address but it is giving them, it pops down after about four or five seconds, so it gives relevant information and it catches the eye. Um, you certainly will get a large, uh, these things have a, have a master reach. Um, and the way that I like to use it is in conjunction with the welcome mat and the exit intent and this hello bar, or the, or in this case it's called smart bar, it might feel like overkill. You can choose where in your site you want to do it. So what I would suggest is if your site has a product or a feature that you're trying to sell, use this smart bar to guide them over to the blog where you can capture their email address or capture the email address directly from this bar. The, the smart bar is site-wide uh, aside from the blog. And on the blog, that's where you hit them up with the welcome app. The exit set. So you can use them in conjunction without really ruining the user experience. Samples. This is how you can customize it. Uh, out of the box, it comes with these different color combinations. And you can see it looks, it's clean, it's good, and you can uh, run A-B tests to figure out what works and what messaging is best for you. All right, so we're gonna do something a little different. I'm throughout here, we're gonna do a little bit of homework assignments. I want you to think about the Sumo Me tools that I just talked to you about. And at the end of this conversation, we're gonna talk about some different kind of creative ways. What I talked about is presenting a message that says, we'll collect your email address in exchange for uh, enter to win a contest, or give me your email address and I'll give you a coupon, or here's a promo code, go over to the store and buy it. Be thinking about some more creative ways, because that this tool is available, but we can use it any way we want. So if you want to present a message that's unique, we can do it. So at the end of this, we're going to talk about that. And I don't have preloaded answers for that, so like, if you don't give me good ideas, we're just going to stand here in silence for a little while. Okay, so this is my very favorite tool in the whole world. Uh, it's called Intercom. It's intercom.io. Uh, they've got, there's actually a couple of plugins in the store that are 
um, Built in the Wild and there's uh, official one. Uh, I think this might actually might be one of the Built in the Wild ones. It just makes it really easy to install. So Intercom is, the way that they market it is that it's a customer relationship management software, like a CRM, uh, but it's so much more than that. Where Google Analytics will tell you how many people came to your site and what they did, this tells you who they are and exactly what they did. Uh, there's a ton of information here you can see that you can sort and find users by name, email, when they signed up, when the last time they came, uh, did they share with their friends, did they invite their friends, did they buy something? It's event based, so you're the one that decides what event you want to track on your website. Out of the box, there's something really awesome called the slipping away tool. And that will, you can change the parameters, but in this case, it's for every 30 days. If a customer hasn't come back in 30 days, you can find out exactly who they are. And right here, you can individually message them, or down here, you can set up automated messages. So at the 28th day that you haven't seen someone, you can send them a push notification, an, an email, or an in-app message where a window actually pops up. For someone who's slipped away, an in-app message isn't gonna work because they're not at your site, they can't see it. So you need to send them an email, or if you've got a mobile app, it's a, a push notification. This is such an incredible tool for making sure that your users are engaged and coming back. So when I talk about growth, I'm talking about people who are using your product all the time, spending money or earning you money. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a brand new user, it has to be a user. A daily active user, a monthly active user is the metric that people are looking for. That's what you should be looking for to make sure that there are people who are using your product. You can drink, bring a million people to the water, but if they're not drinking it, they all die. Um, you, we all die. <laughs> Okay, um, that's my favorite feature of Intercom. This is not working. Okay, so this is an example of what it might look like on mobile, on your page. That's what an in-app message looks like. It appears on the right side. You're probably starting to see it on some of your favorite sites because Intercom is being adopted and, and competitors of Intercom are doing this, this kind of same kind of thing. Um, the fact that it's on multiple platforms and you can reach people where they are is, is really awesome. Sorry. Uh, here's another example of a chat feature on the website. Uh, this is a landing page, a marketing landing page. So the user is not logged in, but you're able to initiate a conversation when they land there. It's really great for conversions because if it's a complicated product, and this one, which is a spontaneous travel subscription service, people are like, what? Well, I don't know anything about what you're talking about. You're freaking me out. Uh, we did it. I think we did a pretty great job of making the landing page uh, make sense and explain it. But people are using the tool to ask a couple more questions because it's 150 bucks a month they want, before they make that kind of investment, they need to have some answers. Um, so the in-app messaging, the chat tool, uh, you can do surveys, you can send people to new features, there's tons you can do. So this is the last thing about Intercom, this is my favorite kind of growth hack to use a tool like this. You can sort by how many sessions they've had when they came, but, but what I've got here is Twitter followers. Find your users who have the largest Twitter base, you send them a message, you tweet at them and you say, I'll give you blah. <laughs> I'll give you a t-shirt, I'll buy you a pizza, I'll give you a hug, if you'll tweet about this six times. You take the top 10%, the people who've got 45,000 Twitter followers or more, and you make them your power users. And do whatever you gotta do to do that. It's cheap and free, you already have that data. Inside of Intercom, you can find out where they live. I mean, not like their exact address, but you know what city they live in. So if you're running a promotion in Detroit, you can find those people. You can find their Facebook page. Why not go and become friends with them on LinkedIn and Facebook because you've got that information. These are lots of ways that you can use this data to grow a small company to something fantastic. So Intercom is the jam. It's free uh, to, to some level. Uh, and then it gets pricey. Um, this is one of those products I think you should invest in. All right, so going back to it, at the end of this, we're gonna have homework assignment. What are some really off the wall ways that you can use this data to reach people and get them using. Okay, the next one is Social Locker. Uh, this is kind of what it sounds like. It is a tool that will lock content on your blog or your website and they can't get to it until they share. Uh, so you require what they share, you tell them what they have to share, you can make it work the way that you want to work. So uh, this is a simple plugin, it's free. You put this up when you click on it. Oh. You get, a, you get a little pop-up, and you get to share stuff like this, and 
uh, if they really want that, I don't know why anybody would, um, it unlocks it and you've got some brilliant. This is free. Uh, make sure that it counts. Make sure it's something that's worth it. Uh, do not, I, I don't suggest you put this on the home page where they can't even access anything. Put this on the premium stuff. Put it on the good stuff. And uh, there's paywalls. There's all kinds of ways that you can force your users to pay to get to the goods. This is a way that you can ease them into that process. If they see that it's as lightweight as a tweet or a share and they can get something that gets value out of it, not only will you get reach, but they'll have earned something. This goes back to the investment. At this point, they made an investment. They're, they're into it. You know that the kind of person who's willing, one, who's willing to get new pictures of Chris Lawson is really into it. Uh, but if they're willing to send a tweet, then, then uh, you've got them. And that's the kind of engagement you should want. OK, uh, th there's uh, also a WooCommerce plugin if you've got an e-commerce site. There's dozens. There's dozens and dozens and dozens of these social lockers. Uh, I prefer the one that I just showed you. But this one is just simply uh, on the shopping cart page, you get to save 5% if you tweet or follow. Uh, it's a, an easy thing to do, but you grow your reach. It shares the message. And who wouldn't take 5% off of their product sales to help spread the word for you? So these tools are readily available in the plugin store, work directory, or whatever the term is. OK, we're going to be talking about that at the end as well. How can you use that to change the game? Uh, this one is super simple, so simple that you might be annoyed that I included it. But we still see that a lot of people don't have call buttons on their mobile sites. So if you run a business that depends on leads in any capacity, and a phone call is the way for them to reach you, why don't you have a button? Especially because they made a free one for you. So make sure you include that on your site. Viral signups. This, this service is actually um, in beta. There are ways that you can code this. Uh, there are other plugins that are available. This one, you actually have to use their service to get access to it, which I think is pretty brilliant. Um, but I, I, I really like how they do it, so I suggest you check them out. It's called Viral Signups. If you go and you say, I like this idea, I'm going, once you open the doors, I want to be a customer, and then you get hit with this. Well, why did that work so well all of a sudden? I just use all of the juice of it. OK. So then you get this message that says, you'll get it for free for, for 12 months. You can come up with any message. You can say, I'll give you a t-shirt. I'll give you early access now. Do you want access now? Get five people to come and sign up, and I'll give you access now. This is a very affordable way to build hype. Um, there's a psychological play here where, where people, they want it, and they'll do whatever it takes to get it. Because like a child, do this. Treat your users like a child, and <laughs> they might they might actually repay you. Uh, and this shows this show this next one shows uh, the series of like emails that you will get that keeps you pushing forward. You have, like two of your friends have signed up. You only got to get three more, so they're going to keep tweeting about it. They're going to keep sharing about it until you sign up. They did. And then you did it. Yeah. So so that thanks for that. If you get if you fall into, if you're number four or five that sign up, you're then put into this same funnel where you want to get free for 12 months. And this is a great way, uh, like, yeah, <laughs> you'll get it today. Don't worry. I'm, I'm going to blast all of you later. <laughs> Don't you worry. OK, remember, we're going to think of some creative ways not just to get early access. I'd like for you to be thinking about how viral sign up can help your business, even if you've already launched. So it's called Viral Sign Up, and the, the precipice is that uh, if you're going to be launching your service, but many of us already have products that are launched, so what do we do? Let's think of some creative ways to use that. How am I doing on time? Anybody got? Oh, dude, this is rocking. OK, this is something that I'm in love with. It's called One Push, and you will actually send push notifications through your website the same way that mobile apps send push notifications. And you're like, what? So uh, when you visit a website that has this, it asks for permission. You can, the user can say no. Um, I wish that that was a little sexier so that people were, knew why they were signing up. Uh, but that's a, a browser thing. This particular plugin, OneSignal, uh, works on 
all the, the three major browsers. Some of the other ones that are out there are only Safari or only Chrome. These guys seem to be the only ones who have cracked the Firefox nut. Uh, one signal. So once you do that, then you're browsing the web, and you, as the blog uh, WordPress administrator, site or blog administrator, you've got something to say. You can automate it to where every time you post a blog post, it's RSS feed and a notification is sent. Or if you want to find an indiv individual user, maybe you do it in conjunction with the old intercom. You know who that person is. You know that they've got a million Twitter followers. You know that they don't yet have a t-shirt. You want to send them a push notification. Uh, so they're browsing the web, and whatever time you schedule it, that comes up in the top right. Absolutely. You're, this dude's on Pizza, I Love Pizza site. He's left your site, and it's time-based. So when you hit send, or you schedule it to send, that push notification, notification will come up. There's a couple of other services I really like. Uh, one's called Push Crew. Uh, it's affordable and, and great, and you can code it into WordPress, no problem. It's like two lines of code. They just don't have a WordPress plugin. Today I wanted to give you options that you could go and just go install. Uh, there's another one called Roost. Uh, Roost is great, but it costs a little bit of money, 12 bucks a month or 29 bucks a month. Uh, these guys certainly are going to try to get money out of you, but they've got a free option, which is I think up to 10,000 send push notifications a month for free. So use it. And, and yours just going to be cooler, you know. That not every one of your users is going to adopt it, but the ones that do are going to just—they're in at that point. They're—they're they're your peak. Send them something good. So you know the homework assignment. How are we going to use push notifications? Okay, uh, make your content embeddable. If you've got infographics or videos or good content, you can make everything, every piece of your content embeddable, and like, uh, I don't know like kids will follow what people tell us to do. Your users will often do what you ask them to. They certainly won't do it if you don't ask them to. So if you don't ask them to embed your content, they won't. So here's an example. This uh, above the page is a, um, an infographic. And this code was created by a plugin called um, Embed Code Generator. The reason why I also included Embedly is because Embed Code Generator has not been updated in three years. I don't know why, because it still works, and it works well. So um, at your own risk, it will create that box, and you tell it where to put that code so you can turn it on or off on your content. Uh, Embedly is a different service that they do have a WordPress plugin, but it makes it easier to embed other people's stuff onto your blog which, or website, which isn't what I'm going for here. So what you have to do with Embedly is go to embedly.com slash code, and um, show you how that works. You paste uh, any URL in, um, and it will create the embed code for you. What then you would need to do is manually go back to your page or post and put that embed code, make it available for your visitors. Embedly is uh, top notch. It's O-embed protocol. It works perfectly. You never have to worry about it. It will just take you that one extra step. Well, this is on their site. So what you would do is then go and copy that code and then make your own pretty box on your site to, to make that work. But both in both instances, with uh, Embed Code Generator and Embedly, uh, it puts a link back to your site. So this is good for SEO purposes. Uh, it's good for attribution. A lot of times when people take things like infographics and video, they don't give attribution. So you might have made the best infographic in the world. Somebody takes and puts it on their blog. They didn't link to you. You get no value out of it. This uses a follow tag, so you get the juice. Uh, I think you could probably pack some other plugins if you didn't want it to be followed, or you could, in that code, you could put no follow attributes. Um, but for social purposes and for SEO purposes, just awareness. Having somebody find your site on somebody else's is great. So depending on the kind of content that your your website or your blog generates, make everything embeddable. You, it's not up to you necessarily. You don't have to decide. If somebody wants to put your your full article on their site, let them do it. And I think you know what's coming next. More homework. How can we use this awesome embed tool? Okay, so the long and short of it is, all of this is to help you make some more cheese. You want to make money. I want you to make money. 
I want you to get more users, I want you to have a bigger email list. And let me talk about that briefly. In the funnel, the bottom of that funnel is making money in some way. I doubt most of you are doing what you're doing purely for fun. Uh, but growing your email list is, is raising awareness, developing a relationship, and then you can move them down the sales funnel by sending them regular emails, newsletters, and make no bones about it. Email is still absolutely the best digital marketing app. Hands down, oh my God, email. It's been around for a long time. It's, been, it's not been perfected. Uh, but it's uh, it's the thing that works. So you might come up with a bunch of other cunning uh, ways of reaching your audience, uh, like the push notifications or text messages or something like that. But email is still the proven tactic for uh, for growing your business through sales or user engagement. So if you can figure out a way to grow your email list and then you can utilize that email list in a good way, you're going to also grow your bottom line. Okay, so let's get to homework. Here's all the different things that we talked about, and we're gonna open it up. Uh, this is kind, we'll still do a question and answer if, if we want to, if there's time, but let's do it. So, does anybody have any ideas on how using single sign-on for their website or their blog can, can be done in a way that's a little bit different than what I presented? And to recap, what I presented was an easy way for your users to sign up. If you've got a service or website where people need to, to log in, this gives them a way to sign up or log in easily by clicking just the Facebook button. It pulls the information. The checkout page is awesome. That's a great idea. So um, that will pre-populate name, email address. Depending on the service, uh, I, I'm not sure if this single sign-on plugin, yeah, this one actually has all kinds of API stuff. I know that Facebook will pull uh, address if you give it, and phone number, which are oftentimes that are associated in, in checkout or shopping cart. I haven't seen that. What's up with that? All right, he's already built something awesome it, that is similar. So by the end of today, he's gonna have an awesome <laughs> single sign on checkout shopping cart plugin for us to all use, right? Is that it? Okay, well, I'll give you till tomorrow. Uh, any other ideas? I'll go to the next one, because I think that was a great one. Oh, sure. Did you custom build that? So a couple of years ago, I saw an email sign-up form that was just a Facebook button, and I thought that was great. And I remember where I saw it. Uh, it was on Tech Cocktails' website, and they're literally the only place I ever saw it. So you could sign up for the email list just by hitting a button, which their ask was just, you know, do you want to get our newsletter? You're putting them in the sales funnel, so did you give them a, a reward for signing up, or was it just get on our newsletter? Uh, so, have you thought about building that as a plugin? All right, he's giving away for free, everybody. Give it away. He's gonna build that plugin. We all get early access to it, as long as we get in the funnel by clicking on the button, right? <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on to Sumo Meet. If you remember, Sumo Meet, the one plugin had multiple different tools. Uh, one of them was highlighting uh, content on the site and automatically prompted your visitor to share on Twitter or Facebook. Any ideas on how we can use that outside of the, like, oh, I think that quote is cool? Come on. It's dead silence if you don't do it, so I'm just going to turn it back. Anybody? Yeah. So you can do that with a hover effect. So when you're hovering down the page, you hover over something, it becomes highlighted yellow. Your eyes drawn to it. They're like, what is this? They go over it, boom. Or way more layman than that, you can just have a button or a graphic that says like, important text, 
I like this to share, and they're like, oh, I get it. You can just walk them right down that path. Maybe at the end of every blog post that you do, you, you come up with a quip or something clever. Yeah. Yeah, and so there's Tweetly and shareable tweets. What he's talking about is the same line where, um, kind of like what Scott said, the, the text is broken out and there's a button right next to it that says tweet this. That button that says tweet this makes you go, well, okay, I'm going to tweet that, tweet that. Says tweets, I'm tweeted. Uh, so yeah, you can make that happen with Sumimi's, uh, but you'll need to create that scenario, and you can do it in any way you want. Maybe it's um, tweet this, and the tweetable text is a really good promo code, or maybe it's a double-sided incentive. Like if you tweet this, and I and we see that somebody on the other end did something, you both get fifty percent discount. Or we'll give you a t-shirt if you do it. And I keep going back to the t-shirts. Obviously, we run a t-shirt company because people love t-shirts. They'll do anything for a t-shirt. Sure. It depends on your product. I sell very expensive websites. Very expensive websites. <laughs> so, um, sending a... All right, so printing and shipping a t-shirt um, a la carte is not cheap. If you wanted to use a service like Zazzle or Cafe Press to make one-offs, it's going to cost you like 24 bucks. Uh, so it totally depends. If you sell a $5 item, please don't send them a $25 t-shirt. But if you, if you have a lifetime value of $1,000 or a lifetime value of even $200, if you know what your cost per acquisition is in a t-shirt, oh, I'm almost done. T-shirts are a great way to do it. Okay, I'm going to fly through real quick. I specifically want to go to Intercom because I love it so much. Um, and you see that knowing everything about your user when they are logged in, what can you do to reach them in a new and creative way? I told you a couple of examples. Find out how many Twitter followers they have. Go and send them a message on Twitter or ask them to do something. That's a pretty basic one. Anybody got any other like really awesome ideas? 